Hi friends, it's Sarah from rufflesandrainboots.com and today I'm sharing a clay pot gnome with a brim hat and a fun beard. If you'd like to make it, just boop, stick around. As always, please give this video a like so I know you're here crafting with me. Now this one is fun. I know not everybody shows you the front back sides. I am completely transparent. I'm gonna show you all the little pieces we made here, a little moss, a little floral brim, and we're just gonna start with this. So if you haven't seen the video on how to create a pattern in faux fur, I'll link that down below. I'm using a flannel, a white painted clay pot I got at the Dollar Tree. This one is three inches. A four inch uh, paper mache cone. Now, if you don't have it, just grab some craft paper and make your own. This is uh, the craft paper I use, which is the Cricut brand, but you can use anything, poster board. I'm gonna be using the Dollar Tree floral wire. I'm also going to be using a fine tip detail glue gun and an iron because I have to iron my wrinkly fabric, little tiny flowers, and reindeer moss from the Dollar Tree. All right, so to get started, I'm just going to iron this. This is a very thin flannel from Joann's Craft Stores. Comes in a ton of colors, uh, but it is very thin. So I'm just going to trace for my brim of my hat the bottom of the open end of the pot. Next up, I'm just going to put a little chalk around the edges so that I can get the shape. I'm gonna put right sides together on this and then pin it in the center so that I can cut out this circle. Now, doesn't matter what size brim you want. If you want a huge brim, measure eight inches or six inches, but we just wanna make sure that it's circular-ish, ish. That's a measurement. Doesn't have to be exact, but we are going to have a nice bendable brim with this method. To cover the paper mache cone is super easy. You don't need a pattern. We do, however, need to do, need to do two cuts or so. The first is a rough cut. Just seeing, wrap the entire thing, making sure you have excess on the bottom and the top. Get that and then get a little bit more detail. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap it and make sure we have at least three quarters of an inch overhang at the bottom. So just scoot that down. See that? Then when we wrap, we're gonna make sure we have at least about an inch to an inch and a half on the top. That's it. Now, we are going to put a bendable item in here, so I like the little hook of the top of the hat, so just make sure you measure that. And again, easy way to measure out the bottom edge is just to fold over this bottom fabric. Just crease it a little bit when you're rolling. You'll see I'll do that here. After I get my positioning, just crease it. It helps hold it in place. And then what that's gonna do is allow you to cut off the bottom and then we'll cut off the side and sort of make sure we don't have too much excess. So what I'm gonna do here is just cut up that side that my cut is really wonky because it was a rough cut. So I'm just making it a little bit straighter for here. And now you can sort of see a little shadow down like a curve down here at the bottom where we thumbed it. So I'm just gonna cut so that actually is about three quarters of an inch, no less than a half inch. I use three quarters of an inch at a, as a seam so that we can cut tabs and glue it on the inside of the cone. Easy peasy. All right, so now we're just gonna attach it. So use a bead of hot glue right on the very edge of the fabric and then just place your cone there. We're gonna let that set while we prepare our pipe cleaner. This pipe cleaner is also from the Dollar Tree. I've gotta start using all these wonderful finds at the Dollar Tree before it goes up to the $1.25 tree in my area. So I'm just gonna double up this pipe cleaner and make sure that I'm using the top portion, um, which is the doubled over version at the top of the cone so that the wire doesn't poke through. All right, get that in place. And then we're just gonna glue it right as close to that seam as we possibly can. So I'm gonna turn around this and show you, yeah. So I'm gonna just glue it right in here. And that way our seam is all wonky, all in the same spot, right? Just make sure you line up the top so you've got that edge up at the top and the bottom will go right up into the uh, bottom of the cone. So put a little glue on that and then be sure to glue down your pipe cleaner directly to the fabric before you start rolling it up. That's all. Now I will say if you are using a thin flannel or a light colored cotton, be sure to spread out your hot glue. So if you were to just put your hot glue here, you'd have bumps, like some crazy bumps. And so I'm just using the tip of the glue gun to sort of spread that glue out and make it flat. You could actually probably even use Aileen's tacky glue here, like a, like a craft glue. You don't even have to use hot glue. 
All right, so I'm just gonna keep going all the way around, making sure that I'm spreading out that glue. Whoops, gotta pull that apart now. I show you the mistakes too, y'all, right? I don't edit that out. <laughs> we all make them. All right, so I'm gonna make sure that I really glue down the very tip, right? Because that's the part that I'm gonna be bending and molding. So I wanna make sure that I, I don't go all the way to the edge. You can see I'll have a little overhang, but I, I spend a little time on this tip, making sure not only that the pipe cleaner is covered, but that is securely fastened there. And then I'm just going to make a hem so that I don't have frays on the edge, and then I'll glue the entire thing down, pulling it pretty tight. And there you go. Now don't finish the tabs just yet because we're actually going to use that to create the inset on our brim. I am going to cut off this big wonky little piece down here at the bottom. And now I'm just gonna flip it up and use the cone only. So it'll be a nice tight fit when we put these two together. So I'm using the bottom of the cone, just create a rough outline here, pin it on either side of that circle we traced, and then just snip. So you're going to give snips, but you're not gonna go all the way to the inside of that circle. So if you do and you're using a frayable fabric, you'll start to see it fray. But what we wanna do is go right inside of it and let the fabric stretch a little. So you can see I'm right inside of it. Now, I'm going to snip each of, uh, or about a half inch little tabs all along the bottom of this piece here. And that way I can just fold it down and glue it and make sure it's nice and tight all the way around. So the idea of this kind of hat is that it looks seamless. And if you mess it up, don't worry, we're gonna cover it up. But if you also can cover it up with like ribbon or a decorative trim, like a pom-pom trim or something like, or spiders if it's a witch or whatever. So don't worry, but we wanna make it all as tightly fitting as possible. So here I'm going to just measure out some floral wire that goes all the way around the outside. I am going to make it smaller than the outside of my hat. Because again, we're working on the wrong side, which means we're going to flip this all out, right? So what we're gonna do is just make a circular-ish shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then you're going to cut a little bit of an overhang. That'll be our secure point. And let me get my snips. Cut that. I could actually cut this with scissors. It's Dollar Tree floral wire. All right, so you can see how big it is right now. I'm just going to squeeze it and bring it in and then secure the ends with masking tape. That's in everybody's craft room. I have like 70 colors of masking tape. I don't know where I got it. Probably Amazon. All right, so you can see I'm gonna set that aside because now we're going to work on the brim. Somebody asked me to use this, so I hunted it down. It's called Liquid Stitch. If you don't have it, use a glue gun. I am not what you would call proficient at using this yet, and I'm gonna show you why. <laughs> There's mistakes, kids. Okay, so I'm using a paintbrush to make sure that I try and get it eighth, an eighth of an inch all the way around the edge, right? Uh, spoiler alert it doesn't stay that way. I let it dry for 30 minutes, undid the pins, and then turned it right sides out, which I'm gonna speed up so you don't have to watch me fumble with that. Okay, now you can see I'm gonna show you, whoo, we got a whole big pile of wonky. Look at this, that doesn't look like a circle. Now it does get a little more circular when I take something not pokey and poke, you know, push out the seams. Make sure you don't have any holes and then tuck in your wire all the way around. You can bend it and then bend it back. So I made mine an oval and then bent it back into a circular shape. So here you can see, I'm just going to pull my little brim down over the end or the top of my hat. So you can see right here. And these little tabs, as I glue them down, I'm actually going to pull it to where it almost lines up with the very bottom of this cone. And then I'm gonna be gluing the top level. So there's two layers of these inner tabs. So you just glue the one on the inside and then glue the top one down. All the way around. Remember, you're lining it up almost directly on the edge. So you can see I put one down and now I'm gonna glue this last little top one down right here. Easy peasy. 
And then honestly, like now comes the really, really fun part. I'm gonna make a big little wavy part around the nose and then some little waves around the edges. And that's gonna give me a nice little crown look here that I can put a big nose on. So I'm just gonna glue this starting at the very top because I wanna make sure I don't see any of that clay pot in front. I'm just gonna put this. Now, if you did watch the uh, faux fur pattern video, do make sure you can keep your shape of your pattern uh, when you put it on your piece. So here I'm just making sure that I don't stretch it out too badly. And then I'm gonna glue it down all the way around. This is upside down, yeah, there you go. I'm going to split the fur to the fabric backing and I'm going to add a generous portion of hot glue for my ridiculously sized wood ball for a nose. And then I'm gonna put a little hot glue right on the top of the nose and on the inside of this hat, just not really on the inside, just on that outside brim there, right there. And then pop it down onto the clay pot. Fun. And now it's time to decorate. So I got these little mini flowers at Daiso Japan. They have them at the Dollar Tree and every craft store. I took a little bit of floral tape, a sprig of reindeer moss, and one of these flowers and just made like a little set. And then I made another little set and put it on the outside of that first flower. And what that's gonna do is it's going to wrap itself around. So it's gonna make like a little arc. I'll show you. Hold on, I'm getting ahead of myself here. All right, so I'm just snipping off the excess at the bottom. So once you have three of them together, you can see it just puts it all the way around, a nice little edge. I made two sets of those, and then I started assembly with just putting sprigs of the reindeer moss directly onto the hat, all the way around. And then I added what I would consider a generous portion of hot glue to my little arcs here and then glued those right down as well. And for the very back, I added a little bit of moss and one very closely snipped flower right at the back. Right there, just tuck that right in. And you can add something dangling from the top of the hat. You can add decorations onto the body, anything you'd like. I just added a couple of more pieces of rainbow or reindeer moss just tucked in to make it a little fuller. And that is it. You can see it's a very simple craft. It has a fun, no pattern patterned hat. Let me know what you think of this craft down in the comments. As always, thank you for being here. Please like and subscribe for more crafty fun.